going on dudes and dudettes? I know there's some music playing outside, but hopefully the mic doesn't pick it up too much so I don't get demonetized here. But yeah, the other day, a pretty talented four-star wide receiver, Taz Williams, did set an official visit to USC around May 17th to the 19th. So that's really good to get him on campus for pretty much the whole weekend, pretty much after spring. So yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing if they can get this guy on their roster in the future. And there was another top defensive lineman. I think he was like a top 50 edge from Ohio. And he said that one of his top priorities is getting a visit to USC at some point this offseason. So I don't know if they officially did start one, like get him in an official visit, like at least in the future, or they're planning on it right now. So hoping that does end up happening for him. At least he is that interested in USC football. So that's pretty good. Another top player, a four-star defensive lineman, Malik Autry, has set a June visit to USC. Don't know the exact date, but either way, getting another four-star talented guy, especially on that defensive line, is Coach Henderson is really doing some dog work and getting a lot of these top recruits in, so that is very nice to see. Another player that's getting an early visit, I think it's from the 2026 class, the four-star defensive lineman, Jakeem Stewart, is coming on April 20th for a USC visit, which is pretty interesting because it made it seem like it's an official visit, even though... He's a year out, and I didn't know you can take official visits year out unless now he can, and then maybe he's going to be switching to the 2025 class. He's going to be graduating early. Maybe that's why, but I remember this guy. They called him Thanos, his nickname. So obviously, if you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he was pretty much the main big bad guy, purple big bad guy in the first half. So yes, this guy is a pretty large fella. Let me get that out for you guys real quick. And yeah. So definitely looking forward to seeing if they land this big-time recruit. Literally, big-time recruits. And then another official visit, or actually, yeah, on three, released their top five-star players. And, of course, the quarterback, Julian Juju Lewis, was number nine on their overall players, which is good. And I think, according to on three regular, he was ranked the number four quarterback on their list. And even in 247 sports, he was ranked number four as well. So obviously, he would be ranked number one if he was in that 2026 cycle. But now that he moved up, I guess they still believe a lot of those guys that are a year older are better. But I still think this guy is pretty good. He should be challenging up for that number one spot once his junior slash senior season, his final year, starts in high school coming up this fall. And I think even... Hussein, Hussein Longstreet is like number five on one of those lists, but he's not on the other list for some reason. But he is a local guy from Corona Centennial, one of the quarterbacks out here. And yeah, he's really freaking good. Most likely going to beat up on my alma mater as well. But yeah, he's definitely more of like a running type of quarterback and making big plays. Not really like a prototypical type of quarterback, kind of like a Julian Lewis that USC is going after, but he is very talented, especially down here in SoCal. And they've been posting here and there of certain players that have signed officially to be in the EA Sports games, and it just says, yes, I, I am in EA Sports college football game, and you can play as me on that game. So that's pretty cool that they've been showing some of the guys. And of course, finally, USC has a guy that was a wide receiver slash kick return, punt return all-star in Zachariah Branch, who was just a freshman this last year. So, yeah, he's definitely going to be a fun guy to play with in the game. But, yes, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing some of these other guys step up and just collect the 600. You'll get to play with your own avatar in the game and not some one that they created, and you'll get a copy of the game as well. So that's another, what, like 60 to 80 bucks, depending what game console you have. So either way... I think it, it could benefit both sides here. And then, yes, PFF did do like a mock draft recently. Obviously, Caleb Williams of USC was going number one. And I think still they had Brock Bowers going at number five. I know there's been a lot of talk recently because of comments made by the offensive coordinator and even the GM and even sometimes the head coach, Jim Harbaugh, for the Chargers that they might be going towards an offensive lineman, especially Joe Alts, but it's pretty weird. No matter which offensive lineman they choose in this 
pretty high up area of the draft, they're going to have them switch over to the right side, even though they've been blocking the left side, because obviously the Chargers have Rashawn Slater, who is their top left tackle of the future. So it's a big thing, too, that you're going to draft a guy that high and expect him to play a different opposite position than he has been. So I don't know. It could work out. It could be very disastrous, I think, if you get the offensive weapon, whether it's Brock Bowers or you know, a Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, or even somehow a Marvin Harrison Jr. drops there. I think you go that way, in my opinion, because if you go for like a top defensive player, it doesn't make sense either, unless they move back. Same thing with an offensive lineman, in my opinion, but we'll see what they do in the near future. And then, yeah, when it came to talking about Caleb Williams, he did mention a lot of stuff saying like when he wants to play in the NFL he wants to have an immortal type of playing career where he'll be remembered forever and then he even mentioned too he is excited if he were to be drafted by the Bears so there's no ill will talk towards that at at all right now and then apparently he made around 10 million dollars in his just two years at USC which is a pretty big thing for their future recruiting and then you see some of those PFF attributes as well his strengths and weaknesses but yeah, obviously he's playing, you know, like a senator or a politician where he's saying, yeah, of course, now he would love to go there. Obviously, all the, the drama and all that other stuff that came out, the rumors about him saying he wanted to own a franchise or didn't want to be drafted by Chicago number one overall because he didn't like the team. It was obviously never coming from him that we don't think. It was most likely other pe people around him. But... Yes, it was nice to finally hear from him officially in a nice interview he did at the Combine. And then, yes, luckily, he is pretty happy to do that. And even hearing the fact that he did get around $10 million in just two years as the main quarterback could probably help sway a lot of other future recruits that are looking to not only play at a nice school, but then also to make some money as well while they're there. It could be pretty beneficial for both them and the school. So, yes, definitely looking forward to seeing what happens in the near future. And FanDuel put out betting odds for, like, the championships in the conferences and all that stuff. And they put out one for the Big Ten. And somehow USC has the third best odds to win the conference championship. Even though when you look at other, they're over under for total wins. It's only, like, around seven and a half. So I don't understand how that works unless FanDuel thinks that USC is going to win more games. I'm not 100% sure, but... Either way, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting as well. And then they did a quick update on the final version of, like, that old 1980-something or something like that, the very first college football AP poll. And I think in that one, Duke was number two and USC was, like, number seven or eight or maybe number six, something like that. But the final one, I think USC was ranked number three in the country and Duke was still, like, seven or eight, something like that. So... Yeah, some pretty talented teams, even all the way back then, a couple of my old teams. But yeah, it's pretty funny to look at some of that future stuff, or actually past stuff. So yeah, it's pretty crazy to see. And then, yeah, there's a lot of talk about this, the different signing periods, that there's going to be three of them now for these high school football players, where there's going to be a final Wednesday in June is an early time that they can sign. There's going to be also a Wednesday following the end of the regular season, which I think is kind of close to what happens now around December and then or maybe it might be sooner. And then also the traditional first Wednesday of February where they used to do the main signing day will happen again as well. So they're working to try to do some stuff to alleviate some of the pressure on a lot of the coaches and recruiters out there. So that's why you see a lot of these even main head coaches accepting you know, lower end positions in the NFL because they don't want to end up doing all that work. And it is kind of bad timing with a lot of the other stuff when they added this early signing period because you just end the season and you have to go and try to recruit for like a week or two, then go play your bowl game if you did make it into a bowl game, which is a lot of money for your college and all that stuff to get your name out there. And that's if a lot of those players are going to stay and actually play for your team and not just skip off to the NFL and not play at all. So, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here, I think. Definitely moving that December one, maybe into late November might help a little bit more. But either way, it's going to be a mess. There are probably going to be people complaining about it 
as well. So we will see. And yeah, I think just the other day I did see that it said that March Madness is only three weeks away, which is pretty crazy because like I've been obviously following Duke and USC here and there. But yeah, I was even wrong about Duke the other day when I thought they were playing North Carolina last Saturday, but it was Wake Forest when we talked about their loss earlier this week. But yeah, overall, it's definitely been a fun ride, but yeah, definitely looking forward to March Madness coming up, one of the more favorite times of the year for a sports fan. So yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing how close and accurate you get to making the picks. And nobody's ever gotten it fully correct, obviously, but yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And speaking of Duke, yes, the, last night they did beat Louisville 84-59. to It was a pretty big time beat down. So, yes, thankfully they're able to get back on the winning column. And I think they have another game or two even before they play North Carolina. So, yes, I was a little bit uh, ahead of the schedule thinking that they had to play because they just kept showing stuff. And there's even like an interview with Coach K and ex-North Carolina coach Roy Williams coming out on ESPN or the ACC network so I just assumed it was happening as well the game soon but either way looking forward to both of those coming up and the rest of the schedule and even the Lakers played last night against the rival the Clippers and I think this is actually the last game of apparently with the Clippers hosting the Lakers in the Lakers own arena because obviously the Clippers are finally moving to their own place but the Lakers sent them out with a loss, of course, with the Lakers winning 116-112. to 112. LeBron James had 34 points, 8 assists, and I think he even outscored the Clippers 19-16 to 16 himself in the fourth quarter. And it was like a 19-point or 21-point comeback around that end of the third or fourth quarter that the Lakers had. It was definitely crazy and fun to see. Definitely very excited that it happened, especially against a team like the Clippers. I don't think it really helped the Lakers in the standings but as long as you get a pretty big victory like that especially the way they came back from a large deficit against a rival that's all you can really care about so definitely very happy about that and to finish off with some miscellaneous news yes Lincoln Park did release a new song called Friendly Fire which pretty much has the ex great Chester Bennington singing pretty much the whole song and it's pretty crazy how they're still able to get all that stuff. I'm pretty sure these were old demos and stuff they didn't release, but it just sounds really great. So if you're interested in some Linkin Park music, at least some newer ones, but definitely go and check that one out. And then one of my more favorite recent bands, Girlfriends, released a new song and music video to their new single called Shut Up and Kiss Me. So I think that's really good. I think the article said it's a new punk rock anthem. I don't think it's that good it's still a really good punk rock type of alternative song that i like so either way go and check it out if you're interested and i didn't even know that tom DeLong wrote another book with his partnered other author aj hartley who wrote secret machines and some of those other books prior that he's selling on to the stars and angels and airways.com but yeah this one is called trinity and then there's a pretty interesting quote that tom had i want to read it for you guys and he said, the story takes place around a seminal UFO event that he believes happened. Although the location may have been changed, the importance of what he believed transpired remains. So, obviously, pretty recently watching Oppenheimer, I know they called that, you know, those things, the Trinity Project and all that stuff. But I don't know if he means that we were getting nuclear weapons ready because of certain UFO events happening or to be able to combat against the aliens and UFOs. Maybe that's what the story is about. So that'd be pretty cool to see when it does officially come out. I think it was like sometime in the middle of June. It's already available to pre-order. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out, I guess. Yes, thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great day. Bye.